ladies and gentlemen, private corporations is an entity that generates profit, not only for profit seeking, but in order to protect the life of the employees and also the supply chain of the entire like corporation group in order to sustain the supplies and employees as well. The harm we see under the status quo is that this entire um, ecosystem is being jeopardized because of one to two irresponsible people taking an extremely irresponsible action. So even if we accept the harm that the corporations would not, not hire these, like, uh, these people who take responsible action, we are happy to accept this trade-off in order to protect the majority of people who are innocent and not involved in any of this situation. Before moving on to my two substantive matters, I'm going to first define the model. We have three conditions today. Number one, the context of where this debate operates is mainly during the hiring process. For example, the interviewees would ask applicants about their lifestyle choices, and they would also separately run a background check on SNS, for example, to see what kind of statements they make on Facebook or Twitter. Secondly, we would limit the, the scope of, um, of um, exclusion to controllable controllable lifestyle factors like eating habits, drinking habits, smoking, or like political activities. For example, the anti nikyoso demonstration taken by some people. And we would not include gender or sexual orientation or race, which is impossible or extremely difficult to change. So we have a reasonable distinction between these two. Thirdly, we would also make it enforce companies to make it clear that when they turn down an applicant, they should clearly tell that we don't accept you because you have a bad drinking habit so that they, these people can receive proper feedback so that they can change their attitude uh, when they apply to a company for the next time. With this being the reasonable model, I'm going to move on to my first substantive matter of why we should not accept like these rare, uh, these wanted to ex irresponsible people to jeopardize the entire company. So, what do, what do these irresponsible people typically do? I'm going to give you multiple examples. For example, recently, a Zhao pilot got extremely drunk in England, and he still went onto the plane. Or a bus driver was like playing around all night, and he caused an accident. Or for example, a basketball team in Japan like committed prostitution in Southeast Asia. Or there are many like part-time workers who go into like refrigerators and supermarkets, and this is so-called bakata, for example. Why are these actions extremely harmful to the corporation's profit? Four reasons. Number one, there is a revenue decrease because of a direct sanction or, let's say, deprivation of a license. For example, in, so that the business itself could be prohibited. For example, in Zhao's case, Zhao actually was not allowed to have, uh, have certain planes flying into England for a certain while. Or in bus driver case, in, in worst cases, the corporation itself would be deprived of their license, which means the operation would be uh, unsustainable. Or uh, even if it's not that explicit, ladies and gentlemen, bashing and reputation risk is extremely serious. For example, in the case of the prostitution of the bas Japanese basketball team, the, support, the number of supporters decreased immediately after this incident was being reported. Or in, in Dentsu's case, because there was an aggressive person who committed power harassment and sexual harassment to a young female employee, like the, the, the social granting of Dentsu went down dramatically. This means that this also would jeopardize a company being able to collect new incompetent applicants. Or like the Bakata incident would directly jeopardize people not going to a certain Titan's chain, for example. So in various reasons and occasions, having an irresponsible uh, employee may directly jeopardize the company's business. Why is this harmful? Um, and it is difficult because if companies are not able to exclude these people based on how, what their lifestyle would look like, these, these irresponsible employees would have less incentive to change their lifestyle habits because they will be simply accepted on that ground. So if we take this proposal, number one, we will be directly able to, able to directly eliminate these people through the interviewing process, or even if not, we can, the company can strongly suggest or recommend their applicants to change their attitude unless they will not be accepted. That's, why we, that's the clear mechanism of how this kind of harmful incidents can be rectified by taking this proposal. Why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? Because on a practical sense, ladies and gentlemen, if a company loses a lot of revenue, or if the company is not allowed to continue its business, it is simply harmful because companies would now have to, for example, close down factories or lay off their workers, or if the company itself d disappears, all of their employees have to be hired. 
or they have to cut suppliers, which is which directly jeopardizes the income of people who work for their supplier, which is a direct harm to the well-being of these people because they are going to either be reduced to reduce their salaries or they are going to lose their jobs. This is the harm we want to approach on side government. With this being said, I'm going to move on, and uh, I'm going to move on to the second analysis on why is it legitimate to deprioritize these people on on their lifestyle choices. So I'm going to give you three reasons why. Number one is the controllability of the lifestyle. For example, like having a crim um, like like drinking habits or like. Uh, casually commi like committing to sexual harassment or going to prostitution is a purely is purely a lifestyle choice. So it's a matter of fact that whether you would like to go to prostitution or you refrain from that. So this is extremely easy. Not yet. Um, this is extremely easy. Whereas for employees who are pre-existing in that company, they would not really have any choice for the actions being commi committed that for, for by these new applicants. That's why, on a controllability basis, we don't really we think that the, the priority sits with the existing employees. That's why we companies turn down applicants with a criminal record or extreme political ideologies like neo-Nazi. Or companies also prohibit people from having side businesses because they ask their employees to have 100% commitment to the main business. Secondly, also chronologically speaking, we think the existing people would have more history and more stake in that company, whereas the applicants will only lose a, an opportunity loss, which means that they can go to another company to find a job, whereas the, the employees, existing employees are going to be risked, uh, they have to face the risk of losing their existing job. Lastly, on a quantity basis, if one or two people losing job, it is serious, we accept that, but one or two people jeopardizing an entire, for example, Hitachi Corporation with hundreds of thousands of employees is an even more serious problem. That's why for these three reasons, we believe that we should prioritize the harm minimization or, or mitigation by taking this proposal, and we're happy to trade off the minority rights in that sense. For all those reasons, the motion is passed.